You put a two-year-old child in a crib with a bunny rabbit and an apple? Let me know when the child eats the bunny rabbit and plays with the apple. Welcome to the Cannabis Vegan. I'm Jason Logic. On today's show, we're going to be looking at 30 Cannabis Breakthroughs of 2015. Also, we're going to be looking at Steve D'Angelo's The Cannabis Manifesto and through his medical breakthroughs that he has really shown what a clean, safe cannabis should look like every time. This and more on The Cannabis Vegan. that you have a cell phone and you have a computer it is unfair to pick one thing that lions do that you want to mimic when you don't want to mimic anything else they do when lions walk up and greet each other they snip each other's ass when i came in this room you did not kneel down and snip my ass guys let's jump right on in big big things and big developments have happened through 2015 um, a lot of the situations that have come down the pipeline have just been miraculous a lot of people have seen much hope in their states um, countries a lot of people have had much success just with their own at home and the developments that keep coming down the pipeline really show. So as we look through the 30 cannabis breakthroughs of 2015, it really shows that what we're really accomplishing has made a difference for everybody. As we just go back to just January, that's a great place to begin. Well, in January, the American Academy of Pediatrics urges the DEA to reclassify cannabis. You know, that in itself was gigantic because it obviously it was making a huge step towards making it more legal, more proper for everybody. Just that next, you know, that next level having any, any academy as big, of course, as the pediatrics being able to really push the limitation and say, hey, this is 2015, this is January, we want to make a difference. That's amazing. As we go forward, we can clearly see by the end of that time, we clearly also had um, one year later after Colorado's policy had confirmed that everything is just fine. So one year later, absolutely amazing. Obviously, Germany uh, researchers have found uh, even further evidence that cannabis fights cancer cells. And that was just within the beginning of 2015, guys. So as we can clearly just scroll through you can clearly see that it just keeps changing, just keeps showing all of the promises. And this is just without even trying yet. This is just with, hey, let's go ahead and just introduce this. Let's, let's see where we can get going with it. And now that we have, it's absolutely incredible. By the time that we got to April, 
we definitely had not even 50% of America coming out even further through, hey, we, we like cannabis. Hey, I'm a cannabis user. I've been waiting to explain myself for many years. And now the situations are really starting to step into light. I congratulate everybody that has continued this from every state, from California, Nevada, Colorado, Pennsylvania, New York, Texas, and Florida, as well as Oregon, Alaska, and so many more on the way. And that is just to name just a few. As we can clearly look forward to, we can clearly see that how much of the world has taken note of this. Places like Spain not only has reclassified, but has really shown much promise in all things cannabis, especially with having this year's Spanibus. Absolutely amazing. We can also clearly see that as we get towards the end of the year, we really start to approach what I like to call the cannabis revolution. As we take a closer look into Steve D'Angelo's much, much big appreciation of the things that he has done in the past, the present, and in the future, we really need to take note of this, guys. Let's go ahead and take a look. Hello, I'm Steve D'Angelo, Executive Director of Harborside Health Center and author of the Cannabis Manifesto. My brother Steve, he's one of just these very unique people in the world who understood at a very young age what their mission in life was. Some kids pick up a violin and they start playing. I picked up cannabis. I didn't think there was anything wrong with what I was doing, and it really, really irked me. I didn't want to leave a lifestyle of even less freedom than I had. I wanted a lifestyle of more freedom. Legalizing cannabis was a prerequisite for my own personal happiness, and so I made it my mission. The danger is not really the thing that gets me the most, though. Uh, you know, I stopped worrying a long time ago about going to prison or having everything that I own seized from me. I'm sorry. <clears throat> What keeps me up at night now, what really bothers me now, is knowing how many millions of patients that we could help around the world who have misery-causing conditions. I was in an elevator freefall accident almost 10 years ago. In September 2006, I ended up being hospitalized. Um, my PTSD got to be too much for me. If it weren't for medical marijuana, I would have committed suicide. I'll never forget the day that I was walking through Harborside and I noticed an older woman who was sitting on a bench in the main area and I saw the tears were dropping down her face and so I went over to see what was wrong and she looked up at me and she smiled. She said, I've been able to unclench my hands for the first time in eight years. She had just applied a lotion uh, from a sample jar that we had sitting next to the bench. When Yoli and I saw each other, it was love at first sight. We've been together now for 12 years, and she's my partner in every sense of the word that you can imagine. You know, when we first started talking about all the things that cannabis was good for, uh, people would look at me and say, ah, oh, you know, the hippie thinks it's good for everything from hangnail to cancer. He must be crazy, right? Well, now, with the discovery of the endocannabinoid system, which only happened in the 1990s, we have scientific proof that explains the widespread efficacy of cannabis. I imagine and I envision a world where cannabis use is, is more common, where it's more widespread. And to me, that world looks like a much gentler, a much kinder, a much more inclusive kind of world 
than the one we have now. A world where there's less interpersonal violence and there's less interpersonal conflict, where there's a greater appreciation for nature and for the people that surround us, where creativity is valued as highly and more highly than conformity is. A place where gentleness is not viewed as a sign of weakness, but as a sign of strength. Thanks for watching. It means a lot to me. In the book, you'll find a lot more facts and stories about cannabis. I hope you'll also find inspiration and passion, because we've still got a lot of work to do. And I hope that you'll join me and make sure that this very special plant has the place in the world that it truly deserves. All right, guys. Well, just wrapping this up here. I'd like to mention that as we get closer to the end of the year, we can clearly see as we are in the last stages, the last moments of 2015, let's just really look back and know that we have made quite a difference. And as we look forward to 2016, yes, let's really crush this into 2016, guys. I appreciate everything you guys have done and more to come from the Cannabis Vegan. Imagine a world we could live in with these seeds and the minds of our children and these trees and grow our solution. Hemp can heal the world. Imagine the world we could live in with these seeds and the minds of our children and these trees and grow our solution. Hemp can save the world. Hey, Steve. What's good today? Here, check out this sun-grown blue dream. Sun-grown? You mean outdoor? Really? Yeah, really. Check it out. It tastes as good as it smells, and this batch tested at 17.5% THC. But I thought that sun-grown medicine wasn't the same quality as indoor. Yeah, I heard that story, too. But it wasn't always that way. In the late 60s and 70s, California produced the most amazing cannabis I have ever seen. With colas as fat as my arm, so resinous you could pick them up just by sticking your fingers to them. And all of it grown only using the power of the sun. It was beautiful. Until the helicopters came. The DEA started using them to spot the cannabis fields. They destroyed and confiscated medicine and forced growers to plant under the trees, in the shadows, which made the medicine lower quality and forced patients to grow indoors. A whole new industry sprang up, dedicated to improving indoor farming methods. Over time, techniques and equipment improved until they could almost replicate the power of the sun. But now, 8% of California's household electricity is used to grow indoor cannabis. It takes the equivalent of 200 pounds of coal to produce one pound of indoor cannabis. That drives up the price of medicine and drives down the quality of the air we breathe. We decided something had to be done. So Harborside worked with our growers and we gave them legal protection so they could come out of the shadows and back into the sun where today they're producing rich, powerful, aromatic cannabis at substantially lower cost. That's what we call top shelf sun grown. The sun grown medicine is just as tasty, just as potent, but at a lower price. That's right, sun grown costs less and tastes great, so it's better for you and better for the planet. two-year-old child in a crib with a bunny rabbit and an apple? Let me know when the child eats the bunny rabbit and plays with the apple.
It is unfair to pick one thing the lions do that you want to mimic when you don't want to mimic anything else they do. When lions walk up and greet each other, they sniff each other's ass. When I came in this room, you did not kneel down and sniff my ass.